Thanks for joining our monthly community webcast. I'm Jürgen Kress, part of the Oracle Integration Product Management Team. In case you missed one of our webcasts, on-demand recordings are available. For details, please see our monthly community newsletter and subscribe to the Video Hub Partner Channel. In today's presentation, Phil Wilkins and Dan Gert will introduce DevOps for Oracle integration based on their customer success at London Heathrow Airport. Hi, Phil, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Phil Wilkins is a senior consultant and technology evangelist for Capgemini UK. As an ACE director, he published several integration and API books. Phil, which is your most important book? Oh, it would be the first one on integration cloud. <laughs> right answer, thank you very much. We are also joined by Dan Gert, president of Flexagon. Hi, Dan. Oops, sorry. That I was on uh, mute. Hi, Jürgen. So you're one of the first users of SourceSuite and you developed FlexDeploy. In one sentence, what is FlexDeploy? Well, it's a DevOps automation platform to increase the speed of developing and delivering Oracle-based uh, technology solutions. Great. So you have implemented at London Heathrow Airport Oracle integration to connect with Oracle SaaS. The successful project was delivered in time and budget using the Capgemini Agile Innovation Platform. And continuous integration, continuous delivery, and release automation is based on FlexDeploy. Our objective of today's webcast is to share DevOps best practices for Oracle integration. Quick Thanks. housekeeping. Please feel free to post your questions via the conference Q&A tool or Twitter hashtag past community. At the end of the webcast, we will answer them. Slides will be available at our Video Hub channel and are available at the community website. Please share your feedback via the Zoom survey at the end of the webcast. For today's agenda, after the community announcements, Phil will present the London Heathrow customer case and the Capgemini innovation platform. Then we'll introduce FlexDeploy and the Agile Innovation Platform, including a live demo. And at the end, we will wrap up with your questions. So let's get started. We are excited to announce the Partner Technical Forum, our annual conference, and we run it online. Two schedules for EMEA, North America, and LAD, March 22nd to 25th, and for JPEG, March 29th to April 1st. It's uh, one week conference to update you on the whole Oracle infrastructure and platform services directly from the product management team. The conference is designed for developers, consultants, and architects. And you get a lot of information, live demos, roadmaps, updates, and best practice from successful projects. We have nine different tracks. I would definitely recommend the integration track to connect SaaS and the track to build chatbots with Oracle Digital Assistant. Registration is open at bit.ly slash Oracle Forum 2022. We are happy to announce that we continue the free certification campaign. So certification is important for all of us as it's a real career boost. And until February 28, we continue to offer free implementation certification for Oracle integration and digital assistant and many other cloud platform services. Quick updates on the integration side. All information is published at our community website, including today's presentation. And we open up registration for the free hands-on boot camps for you as a partner, specifically for SaaS partners and consultants who would like to connect ERP, HCM, and CX with Oracle integration. The goal of the trainings is to enable you to build a demo proof of concept and to start with a project. Registration is open via the community newsletter. We have the following schedule in February in India and EMEA, in March in South America and Asia, end of March and April in the US and India, and we finish the fiscal year with South America and EMEA. It's, each of the schedules is a three-day hands-on training. Register soon as the trainings are booked out. For details and registration, please see the monthly community newsletter I published the January edition. If you're not yet a member, please subscribe to get our monthly updates. 
Same on the digital assistant side and the developer community newsletter, we updated the community website with the latest information and the newsletter was distributed yesterday. So it's brand new, take a look and subscribe to the developer community newsletter. Today's webcast is recorded and will be available on demand at Oracle Video Hub. There you can find also all the other webcasts. With this short introduction, I would like to hand over to Phil Wilkins. Phil, welcome back. Thank you. So let's uh, start with uh, some screen to look at. And here we go. Right. Yeah, looks good. Excellent. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where in the world you are. So um, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we go and get into the Heathrow uh, um, use case, uh, we would like to um, start uh, by talking through what the Capgemini Agile Innovation Platform is, to, uh, and Dan will talk about uh, uh, Flex Deploy, uh, and then we'll come back to the use case because then you'll be able to see uh, a lot more easily some of the value propositions and how it plays into a successful uh, delivery. So. Within the uh, delivery of, of solutions, um, we are trying to support customers and organizations with a, a variety of drivers from competition to sustainability, um, you know, either in cost or actually trying to be uh, more green. Um, and also uh, trying to accommodate in the, in the world of COVID, new, uh, uh, supporting new ways of working. Uh, and enabling companies to deliver their platforms, their tools, their capabilities in new, fresh ways. Um, to do that, we, we've um, probably all come across uh, the uh, Gartner uh, Pace layering, three layers, systems of innovation, differentiation and record. And what we try to do with the Agile Innovation Platform is, is obviously play particularly to the innovation, but it will support the differentiation and systems of record layers. Uh, but um, you know, what's important here, particularly around uh, the uh, innovation layer is pace and, and the ability to deliver it quickly. But if you're successful at the innovation layer, as, as Gartner says, you'll see your uh, solutions uh, move down the stack and become part of your differentiator or even part of your long-term record. So Cap Gemini's um, Agile Innovation Platform is looking at innovation, not just as a big bang, although it will support that, but we also view innovation as continuous small deliveries. A little bit of success every couple of months will deliver a huge amount of benefit over a long term rather than going for a, a big multi-year delivery program. But that's not to say that it, uh, it doesn't support that. And actually, the, the use case we're talking about today uh, did go down that uh, more significant Big Bang approach. Um, the AIP or Agile Innovation Platform focuses on, on back end uh, uh, benefits, particularly around integration, um, but not exclusively to integration. It does fit into other areas. Uh, and we recognize that, that the world contains not just Greenfield, but uh, most organizations are gonna have some sort of legacy platform in existence as well. And we need to support that. Um, and we bring, bring, that, bring that together and, and address it in, in several different views. A pure innovate, uh, which is where we might be talking about digital front ends and digitization of uh, existing systems. Uh, and supporting uh, architectures as diverse as microservices and event driven, if you're up on the, the, the cool end of things to traditional SOA or even uh, just monolithic solutions. It will support the, the paths for SaaS stories. So this is when you're wanting to uh, take Oracle uh, SaaS solutions and use PaaS technologies such as OIC to fill out uh, and add your differentiator or address solution gaps that might exist because it's uh, you know special uh, capability for your organization um, or even allowing you to go into the world of uh, innovating on top of 
uh, Oracle Cloud and Oracle SaaS or even uh, traditional solutions on-prem. And of course, supporting the idea of uh, some organizations are, are so heavily committed to their uh, on-prem uh, solutions that uh, the transition to cloud is uh, a long, long way away. Um, and therefore they need to be able to extend or wrap their uh, existing on-prem eBiz and uh, PeopleSoft, et cetera, uh, solutions as the first step towards perhaps digital and then maybe cloud as well. So we can keep customers moving forward even if they're not on the latest and greatest toys. How do we do that? Well, we exploit innovation as code. Uh, and what we do is bring a whole set of uh, pre-built building blocks uh, as in, uh, infrastructure as code through the use of Terraform and Ansible. So we have uh, building blocks that we can bring together very quickly to create environments uh, and, and deploy them and, and, and do it in a very consistent, repeatable, rapid manner. No hand cranking of VMs if we can help it. It's all automated to make it reliable predictable. We look at uh, the components uh, and building blocks to help um, the uh, solution building. So things like uh, uh, there's uh, elements for the idea around uh, uh, Gartner's data hub, um, which is trying to move data out of the uh, back end data stores and put them into cache and things like that. Uh, so that uh, your digital front ends and mobile solutions and so on can get access to the data very quickly in a very uh, responsive manner. In this day and age, we can't ignore security. Your GDPR mandates you consider it from the outset, but we also think about security from perspectives of software build process. Uh, I'm sure most people are familiar with the, the uh, uh, problems that SolarWinds had 18 months, two years ago, where their software supply chain uh, was disrupted, uh, uh, resulting in customers receiving malicious content, uh, through to things like uh, making sure that we're securing and separating uh, scope and concerns so that we can look at uh, offshore resource models as well. Um, and leveraging the fact that Capgemini being a global organization can bring resources from all over the world to meet demands. Of course, uh, that's all fine if we're just building it, but what about deploying it? Uh, so this is where we start to see things like CICD or, or continuous integration and continuous delivery, which uh, Dan will talk about shortly. Uh, and then that allows us to ensure consistency, repeatable environments. Uh, we can drive quality and quality comes partly from your consistency, but also comes from uh, exploiting well-proven pieces of technology and functionality uh, and the ability to test and retest solutions uh, as you go. And then of course, we're in a world of polyglot development these days, whether that's uh, PLSQL or Java, or you're into Node.js and things like that, we're working to accommodate and, and support all those different approaches, but still delivering fundamentally good practices, whether that's unit testing a good old piece of Java, which we all know and love, or trying to bring unit testing into um, PS, PLSQL modules, or even proving uh, and testing our Node.js front ends. So as I say, it's made up of a whole raft of building blocks from, from the templated uh, terraforms, the uh, deployment scripts and tooling uh, into uh, custom utilities that help us do things like testing. Uh, for example, how often do people test their uh, monitoring configuration to make sure that they're detecting and handling unhappy paths through to uh, having a catalogue of uh, technical best practices and guidelines so that uh, uh, we're not having to work those out or, or agree, you know, it becomes very easy to agree with a new customer. These are the ways we're gonna work. Uh, this is what you should expect as an outcome and the deliverable should look uh, of this sort of quality. And these are the reasons why we do these things through to uh, uh, design patterns to solve common uh, challenges and pre-built 
uh, components behind that so that we can accelerate that delivery. So Flex Deploy, how does that fit into AIP? So CAP works uh, on delivering solutions, obviously, and what we need to be able to do is deliver those in a rapid, repeatable, reliable manner. Um, and as a result, we've taken to using Flex Deploy for a raft of region, reasons, apart from the fact it covers all the uh, life cycle considerations you might need in terms of software build, it supports Oracle technologies exceptionally well through OIC, Visual Builder, JET, SOA, EBS. Uh, as uh, Dan, I'm sure we'll talk about is uh, a bit of the SaaS support that now exists. So we've got a platform that we can do our uh, build and deploy processes in a very consistent, very quick manner with clear traceability and audit. Um, and that's where we, we maximize on, on our use of Flex Deploy and save huge amounts of time and actually get up to speed a lot quicker in our terms of our, our delivery. Now I'm gonna um, hand over to, uh, um, to Dan uh, and he's gonna talk to you about Flex Deploy in a bit more depth, Dan. Hey, thanks Phil, appreciate the, the setup in the background on the AIP, uh, share my screen here. And, and uh, first of all, fire off uh, the, the presentation here shortly. So uh, Flex Deploy, you know, it really is all about DevOps for the enterprise. And so what, what uh, you know, the partnership with Capgemini and such has really proven is, is really that optimization across the entire life cycle of, of managing not just the software development and delivery, but the, the ongoing management of, of the infrastructure and the applications and such. And so at the end of the day, in it's, its most simplest form, there's any number of different uh, you know, challenges, if you will, um, including you know, not having the visibility to, to, to what's going on um, or the proactive uh, insights that, that we need to be able to develop and deliver consi uh, consistently. So it's you know, what changes are being made up and down the proverbial stack, right? Who, what, where, when, you know, what, what, what's the del deltas between our environments? What type of governance and controls do we have in place? And are we, are we aligning to those? Uh, and then the, the, the ongoing communication. Uh, who doesn't want to go faster, right? It's, it's about speed at scale. And so how do we go faster and how do we make sure that we are putting the the appropriate quality and uh, controls in place so we can do that and do that fast and efficiently, um, including managing the, the security elements of things that are very core as Phil alluded to. And so the, the, the challenges that we all face, um, the customers face and what, what you all as partners do helping your customers is in many cases addressing the complexities of you know, all of these technologies, whether it's the integration technology and making sure that our, our integrations and connections and lookups and libraries and all those things are getting deployed um, when they need to be, where they need to be, um, or managing in many cases, uh, a lot of moving parts, right? It might be a, a, a traditional Oracle e-business suite. It might be some SaaS related, uh, you know, ER or HCM um, and doing that in concert with your, your integrations between all these systems, some of which are Oracle, some of which are other vendors. In most cases, it's multi-vendor, multi-cloud. So how do, we, how do we deal with these things and get away from the manual uh, efforts, the heavy scripting and, and things that are slowing us down? And then along the way, back to the managing, managing risk, right? Managing quality and risk, whether it's security elements of it, the, the ability when something goes wrong to roll back to a prior version, you know, just getting the, the, the core uh, capabilities just ingrained within the process from end to end. And so with that said, that, that's really what uh, Flexagon and Flex Deploy are all about to, to simplify that ongoing innovation and delivery and management of, of the solutions. And so you know, what is Flex Deploy? Well, it's a few things. One, it, it is a DevOps platform. So integrating the likes of build and continuous integration and an artifact repository with heavy deployment automation, and then what we call release orchestration. So yes, package up and you know, build and deploy into an environment, but then manage 
the entire release pipeline with whatever the technologies um, are that are that are in, in scope. So with Heathrow, you know, the example that we're specifically focusing on, there are lots of them, whether it's the infrastructure with the terraform and that, you know, that, that that's being um, orchestrated all the way to the, the integrations with OIC to Apex and the supporting database, you know, those sorts of things. So how do we have an integrated platform that handles all of that? And then on the right hand side, what we call enterprise platforms in general, um, COTS and certainly Oracle's at the top of the heap there, uh, where whether it's at the, the application level, middleware, database, BI, you know, all sorts of technology that we have out of the box, you can just take, take advantage of. So we've done all the engineering to, to deal with the complexities of each of those technologies. Um, so, so, you know, our customers and certainly partners don't have to. So that's uh, the second piece. And then the third is integration across the tool chain. So customers all have different tools, whether that is, is things like secrets management tools, if they, if they have externalized their credential and secrets management, different types of planning and issue tracking and service or change management tools, of course, source control and test and you know monitoring, all sorts of things that are out there, lots of really good tools. And so we've got out of the box support for you know, many of them. These are just examples of what, what's there. So you can have an integrated streamlined end-to-end -end process with whatever the, you know, whatever the tool that your customers are using today um, and as that evolves. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's all of that. And you know, as Phil alluded, the, you know, the, the out-of-the-box support for, for Oracle-related technologies, both you might say more traditional, uh, you know, Jurgen referenced the, the first, first partner to use some of the uh, SOA and SOA suite as in fact on the, on the cloud service. Um, well, it's just an example of that and OIC and Apex, but think about it as extensive support for database and developer tools over on the left-hand side, all the different types of middleware, uh, you know, kind of middleware type of technologies from WebLogic and all the traditional uh, fusion middleware and other integration technologies and such. And then heavy application, whether it's the COTS with eBiz, PeopleSoft, Siebel, all the way to uh, the Fusion applications. Um, so having the out-of-the-box support for all of those and the, the supporting BI. So whether that's the traditional BI or OTBI in the cloud, you know, those sorts of things. And then extensive support for the cloud infrastructure and platform, okay? So at the end of the day, it's about having the, the platform that has a lot of out-of-the-box capability for, for Oracle and other um, technologies, commercial and open source, and then the full platform that helps to get the job done very, very quickly and efficiently. So what we'll do here in, in about 15 minutes is just do a flyover of Flex Deploy. So basically I'll walk through the UI um, because it's visual, it's, it's easier to see, but the entire platform is exposed with APIs, with REST APIs for configuration, for execution, you know, from end to end, there's a full webhook based uh, integration fabric, a development environment and runtime environment for webhook based integration, all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, um, we'll, we'll walk through a few examples of, of only how we manage uh, what we call release pipelines and then handle the heavy lifting underneath that. So I'll just give an example here where um, maybe a couple examples that, that maybe is more traditional. Um, it might be this example um, here for Oracle uh, Apex, since uh, Heathrow, for example, is using um, Apex. And in addition to handling the core Apex applications, it handles the supporting database changes they use ORDs, so it handles those REST data services. And ultimately, this is called a release that's composed of uh, the set of different things that, in Heathrow's case, is used to, to manage uh, you know, some of their billing capabilities. Okay, And then ultimately, we have snapshots of the release that we flow across a release pipeline to manage and govern you know, the controls that, 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 that need to be in place. So there's one example. Um, if we go into more a cloud uh, example here, we have some, some Oracle um, integration cloud that is knitting together, integrating uh, some of the SaaS applications. And so in this case, we have some of the fusion applications, both ERP and HCM, along with the, the SaaS BI in OTBI. And then similarly, we're gonna create snapshots and flow that across a pipeline 
um, iteratively to ultimately achieve you know, a very fast, consistent, repeatable process. So we know exactly um, what's being developed, how the different versions of all of those underlying artifacts are, are being grouped together, whether it's one artifact or a thousand, and, and flowing that iteratively across um, what, what's called the, the, the release pipeline. And then if I just drill into the snapshot, true enough, you can see the details associated with the ERP CM configurations. You can see some of the, the details associated with the, the BI, uh, the OTBI related things. And then if we wanted to, we could go and drill into the warranty claim uh, back end, okay, which as a matter of fact, we'll do right now, which is going to turn into a project. Okay, so we, we are up at a release pipeline level where we're governing and controlling the, the iterative flow in a CI CD type of style. Um, flow of changes across your different stages in a pipeline, okay, managing that to whatever level of option and, and, and uh, controls and governance that you want. Underneath there lies the details of, of each technology. So in this particular case, here's a warranty claim backend project. So if you look over on the left-hand side, you see different types of technologies. These are called projects within Flex Deploy. And uh, you know, so at the very top is some node stuff. Uh, Phil referenced some of that, and then lots and lots of other support for, for Oracle-related technologies, whether it's the extensive support for eBusiness Suite, you know, PeopleSoft, Siebel, all the way to core database and developer, for example, the Apex-related uh, changes um, and supporting uh, database and ORDs and such. Or as we continue down and we look at Oracle integration, it might be anywhere from supporting the, the Fusion middleware the example of SOA and all of that, or Oracle Data Integrator, or the Oracle API capabilities, or specifically the integration cloud. So here we're looking at the warranty claim backend. And if we take a look at that, in essence, what the project is, is, a, is, is it's managing the artifacts that underlie the particular technology. So with OIC, it's gonna be managing the, the interfaces, the integrations, the connections, the lookups and libraries, um, for uh, a traditional e-business suite, it's going to be managing all of the customizations, forms, reports, PL SQLs, LDTs, right? For, for Apex, of course, it's the Apex application, right? It's the underlying database um, schema changes. It's the ORDS artifacts, those sorts of things. So if we look at the configuration for our warranty claim backend, you'll see that every, uh, every project needs to be configured to, to tie to a source control system. Not always, because Flexplay in this case can reach directly into uh, the integration cloud and pull out those um, artifacts. We're showing in this particular case where we're source controlling them. And as a matter of fact, Flexplay can automatically source control them for you. Um, but all this one's going to tie to Git. I think we're using GitHub in this case. And then we've got a, a build and a deploy workflow. So in the build and deploy workflow, if we go into the workflows, they do the heavy lifting, okay, in this case to manage the underlying Oracle integration artifacts. So in this case, we're gonna do a project clone of sources to extract the different uh, uh, artifacts out of source control. And then we're gonna build, do an execution of, on, of the build integration operation on the Oracle integration cloud plugin to create or produce an artifact, okay? Um, now, if we go look over here and look at our um, Oracle integration deploy, um, you know, you could see, for example, the uh, deploy integrations. And in this case, not surprisingly, it's going to do under the covers, it's going to do an export, right, or an import of the particular changes, and then manage all the complexities that we don't have time to go into here, but handling some of the things that as integration uh, people uh, that, that you know all about. Okay, and so like Phil, for example, is the long, the long timer in the integration, knows the details of how all these the, these specific inputs and settings um, work. Okay, so what are these workflows? Well, they're those pre-built capabilities. So if I, if I just type in Oracle to start filtering some of this, um, what you'll see is, is any number of out-of-the-box plugins and their capabilities, right? Anywhere from you know, the API platform and core, core uh, capabilities, um, some container-related capabilities, Apex, the B2B support, business intelligence. If I go far enough, 
We'll go past some of the SaaS applications and database cloud services and such. Well, there's the suite. That's a long, that's a long runner. Um, and and there's the integration cloud. So here's the Oracle integration cloud plugin with the many different out of the box plugin operations that manage the different spe you know, specific details of the integrations, the connections, lookups, libraries, and other things that you would use to manage the integration cloud in action, okay? So the key is whether it's using that or the stuff for Apex, or you know, as I continue to look down, you can gain an appreciation for the, the out of the box uh, you know, capability that really um, takes care of all of the complexities associated with the Oracle technologies, including our favorite web logic in the sense that it's been around forever and still runs so many things. So managing you know, complex web logic you know, implementations. So with that said, you got an appreciation for what the projects are in this case to manage the, the, the specific um, details of integration cloud. So I could go ahead and I could say, let me go ahead and do a, run a build. And I'm gonna tie this to the, the Oracle SaaS uh, release that we were talking about before um, and submit that, okay? So what it's really doing is it's telling Flex Deploy that it's going to run the, the workflow to create the build artifact, in this case, reaching into Git to extract what has changed, what the developers committed. It could have reached directly into the integration cloud, but now it's going to, um, you know, it's running and creating that new build version and storing version 10591 in the artifact repository. Okay, so all that being done, you know, under the covers, you know, the dashboard has lots of, of information so you can look at trends and that sort of thing. But ultimately it's submitted that workflow, it's gonna create that. And then I tie to that other release, right? So if we go up to the release dashboard, you'll see that um, if we watch this for a minute or two, however long that takes to uh, you know, create um, or complete that build operation, um, it will actually create another instance, which it just did moved over um, and created a new snapshot of the release. Um, there were no gates. So, so it's now going through the process of deploying all of those changes. And we could drill into this to see what's happening, but ultimately, what it's doing is it went off and checked to see what's changed and, and, and basically take only what was changed is, and, and is deploying those. So in this case, it's deploying that 10591 new version because maybe somebody, um, you know, the developer made a change to that integration. Okay, so it's, it's basically deploying only that because Flex Deploy knows the details and keeps track of the details of, of everything that's being built and deployed and is smart enough to do the deployment of only what's changed. So it's taking care of all of that detail, letting your developers develop, right? Letting let everybody basically optimizing the roles that we're in. So all of the heavy lifting associated with managing the details of the OIC and the APEX and the, and the, and the SAS applications and database. And so all of those things that we looked at on that one slide are now being handled. And you'll see that true enough, it deployed the changes, it ran some automated tests. Maybe this was using Postman or something. They were um, it ran those and then sent a Slack message to post people on a channel and then went over to, to see if there were gates over here, which there are. Um, it checked the results of the test. They passed. It's leveraging the out-of-the-box approval management system. And it says, hey, we got to wait for that approval. So that manager group got, got the notification that they needed something um, to review. So they could either review or reject that. And if they do that, it would continue on with the process. Basically heavily automating the process, but also allowing for injection of other things like human intervention, verify quality as an example of that. All right. Or integration with external tools like ServiceNow. So delegate the approval and integrate with the out of the box integration with ServiceNow versus managing it internally. So that's the whole process, if you will. And whether we are using um, the likes of, of uh, Oracle Integration Cloud or, and Apex uh, as those examples or any of the other things such as, as the e-business suites of the world um, or many of the other technologies that we're focused on here. So here's a common example, right? Oracle e-business suite using Oracle Integration Cloud to, you know, 
to, to integrate that in Salesforce, very typical, right? Or it might be like we showed in the other one where there's the, 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 uh, you know, the CRM related capabilities are in with an Oracle cloud. Well, that's fine to, to uh, execute that, okay? So there's all of that heavy lifting. And then the last thing I'll show is, is that visibility. So we have the automation, we have the controls and governance, and now we have the ability to look at the details of what's been deployed, what's been deployed where, right, when, and, and have all the, the gory details associated with whatever those changes are. Um, and, and you can have that so your audits are easy, your, uh, you know, the, uh, the troubleshooting is easy, so on and so forth. Or if you need to go drill into the details, we could have went into the execution um, looked at the artifacts. What exactly was deployed? Oh, it looks like it's the, the IAR file along with the connections because we said manage those connections along with the actual you know, core IAR integration. All right. Or if I wanted to go and look into the details, oops, I jumped all the way out of what happened here. Um, I could just click on that and get the logs right at my fingertips. So optimizing that end to end process. Okay. I'm going to stop there. Hopefully that uh, provided a, a reasonable flyover in terms of what the platform does in the broader sense and, uh, you know, and, and, and what Flex Deploy itself does in, in action. Phil, back to you. Thank you, Dan. So let's start uh, coming back and uh, we'll talk about the, the Heathrow use case uh, in a bit more detail. Um, so Heathrow, um, or Magenta as, as the program was called, uh, went live back in uh, late October, early November last year, and uh, it's been running very smoothly, very successfully from uh, uh, at the uh, outset. Um, and as a result, uh, we've been uh, able to talk uh, and present with the customers. And uh, if you've been watching Oracle PR, you'll have picked up on a couple of uh, press statements about the success of the project. Uh, the driver uh, for, for, uh, for Heathrow in this case was the need to uh, transition off uh, an Oracle EBS deployment with a number of other products um, and consolidate some of their business processes around contract management reporting and things like that. Um, simplify their processes because it had been diversified and um, started to absorb some of the smaller regional airports that, uh, that uh, Heathrow or Heathrow's parent company owned um, and get them into a healthy position if the third runway uh, is to happen in terms of process organization, technology and the rest of it. Um, so as you can imagine, the uh, project has been quite long running. Um, it actually started uh, about three and a half years ago, I think, um, and uh, has had to work through the challenges of COVID and uh, the implications that's had on Heathrow's and airport, which have been quite substantial. So. This is a quick view of the uh, application side of things, the SaaS side of things in terms of all the technology involved. Uh, so you can see a lot of the ERP and HCM modules were involved here. Uh, and there were some significant external points of integration, uh, you know, Primavera and things like that, uh, do their document management. Uh, as with all financial systems, you've got to deal with your banks. Uh, and other accounting and financial organizations. Um, and uh, they were dealing and, and overhauled their processes that they were managing their staff with, uh, including introducing the uh, digital assistant uh, into the mix as well. So uh, a lot of end-to-end -end functional streams overhauled with projects to assets, uh, record to report, source to pay, hire to retire, uh, and service to caching. Um, and that, that required uh, infrastructure, PaaS and SaaS technologies to be put to bear on, on the whole solution, um, as you'll see in, in a moment. 
uh, with data, a lot of data migration as well. So a, a pretty complex ask uh, and all done uh, largely remotely because of the uh, uh, pandemic. To give you a sense of the, how challenging the landscape is, here's a, a, a sort of abstracted view of the landscape that uh, we have. Uh, and you can see OIC, CASB, identity management, uh, all sat down here in Oracle Public Cloud, which we're having to connect out and integrate with um, uh, Heathrow, uh, a big uh, Microsoft fan, particularly around uh, a lot of the tooling. Uh, so lots of data was going out to Microsoft apps and in the collaboration platform, they wanted to use uh, the Azure DevOps tool, for example, for managing and planning uh, the activity. Uh, but we were using the Flex deploy tool for actually execution of the technical tasks. And you can see uh, we've got uh, other Oracle Cloud deployments uh, in Europe as well. Uh, in addition to uh, on-premise processes, uh, so you've got the users, uh, printing processes and things like that, and communications out to vendors as well. So a, a pretty large complex landscape um, uh, in a, a very high secure model, as you can imagine, uh, information they can add to Heathrow has some pretty nasty potential consequences uh, given uh, uh, the sensitivity of the, uh, uh, the volumes of people that they handle, but also the security processes that uh, could be involved as well. So here's a more logical view of, of the landscape. Um, as you can see, uh, we have more of the external interfaces here. In total, we saw around 80 uh, different integration, integration points required. Uh, so quite a few integrations to be built. Uh, and those were handled by OIC, uh, exploiting on the one side the, the, the very powerful adapters that uh, go with Oracle SaaS, but also the fact that it can support and work with um, either technology level integration or uh, where um, appropriate pre-built adapters for external uh, processes as well. Um, Things like uh, Key Vault and, and things like that were also run outside of um, uh, OCI, uh, and that was managed through um, uh, Azure. So we were exploiting not only the connectivity through to uh, the traditional Microsoft Office tools and things like that, but other management tools. In fact, sorry if I go back, you can see I just spotted it again. Uh, there is there's flex deploy in the diagram um, as the PaaS components that we were operating. So here's the, a, a more of an integration view of the landscape. Uh, as you can see, uh, even that I think underplays a little bit of the complexity that was involved, but uh, it wasn't trivial um, by any stretch of the imagination. And in terms of size, uh, you know, this system is uh, processing billions of pounds a year. Um, I think uh, Heathrow's revenue uh, um, is counted at about three billion a year. So these are significant transactions that are going through of high value. Some of these are high value as well, because we're doing things like accounting and transacting for aircraft fuel and, and details like that. So. Um, you know, we, we really did need to make sure that the transactions were uh, running very, very, very smoothly. Uh, and um, uh, if there was a, a hitch, we knew about it uh, uh, and able to remediate. You know, hitches could be things like uh, a remote client going offline or something like that. We move on. Uh, in addition to um, the Oracle Cloud, um, one of the area, uh, um, more traditional solutions that we needed to, to bring into the equation was uh, BRM, the Billing and Revenue Management product from Oracle, because um, the alternatives are not yet the place that uh, 
um, Heathrow needed. So what we had to do, and this is where one of uh, our flex deploys with strengths came into play, is we uh, used the combination of Terraform and Ansible scripting, and we were all able to automate the deployment of BRM reducing it down from what would be traditionally weeks of work down to about four hours. Uh, and that's an end-to-end, -end, stand up all the infrastructure, deploy the databases, deploy the schemas, uh, deploy the configuration over the top of that. Um, so we had a, a very, very powerful process uh, in that. And it saved, particularly when we were creating and uh, tearing down uh, test environments, because we can do that with uh, that kind of automation, that um, we were saving you know, cost there immediately for uh, Heathrow in terms of the number of environments they needed to stand up and how long they were actually running for. You know, we could tear these down and shut them down um, if we didn't need them. And they had, that idea went even further in the later stages of the project insofar as that we automated uh, with the use of Terraform, shutting down processes overnight that didn't need to be running, uh, shutting down servers uh, and things like that so that uh, uh, they weren't being charged, uh, reducing the, the cost footprint of the overall solution as well. And that's a feature that's now uh, gone into uh, or going into our AIP uh, uh, building blocks is that that kind of ability. So that's the topology. Uh, as you can see, quite a bit out there, there are multiple subnets and, and domains uh, in, in regions. And this is a, a really strong visualization of one of the, the, the core values of that continuous integration and, and deployment. Uh, value that Flex Deploy brought to us, not just in, in say BRM, but uh, in terms of deploying integrations and controlling which environments got what and when. So you, as you can see on the right here, we've got quite a few different environments that were being uh, fired up and shut down um, at different uh, cycles of um, the uh, project. Um, and so you can see training, uh, user acceptance, uh, system integration, testing, pre-production, -pre production. These are all being started up and torn down uh, and all being done uh, with, um, rather than going full Amazon on, on it, if you like, where everything is triggered at the moment someone commits a change, it was controlled and conf uh, uh, by a release manager who was basically just pushing buttons on the on the flex deploy UI when the decision was made that we were at, you know an organizational uh, test was ready or uh, we needed to do some uh, uh, training or things like that so a human in the loop decision and controlling but absolutely controlled in terms of managing uh, the cloud costs um, which I'm sure the Oracle sales guys weren't so keen about, but because uh, it affects their bonuses. But uh, as you can see, we're going all the way through the life cycle here uh, and controlling everything very, very easily. This would normally have taken weeks to do uh, and multiple people. It was down to one person. And one of the comments that we got um, uh, from the customer uh, that really started to show that the success was the fact that they said that releases were painless in fact um, you know you didn't know necessarily when releases were happening because there was no national teeth uh, and things like that no no hitches because all those kinds of traditional problems of doing releases and trying to pull lots of things together uh, and getting the config right between environments was all hidden away uh, and managed for us uh, here's another, uh, here's an example actually of the process uh, I mentioned around um, scheduling and stopping uh, components. Um, we were using uh, scheduling from Flex Deploy, which would uh, start up the uh, services, um, make sure the databases were started up, um, and uh, when, when needed, the billing and reporting systems were switched on. 
and everything will be up and running for the start of the working day. And then at the end of the working day, the processes will shut down quietly. So um, as we come to the top of the hour, let's just wrap with a little quick summary. Uh, big complex uh, landscape, billions of pounds involved, uh, challenged by things like COVID, uh, resource changes going on on the customer side because of IR35, um, you know, changes impacted uh, nearly, well, just over five and a half thousand people, um, 1500 different suppliers involved, uh, 1200 customers, because of all the billing changes and transitions, all done very smoothly uh, without hitch. Um, so the Agile Innovation Platform is, is being key to, to facilitating a, a lot of these things, uh, of which, as we say, Flex Deploy is, is a key and very beneficial building block. Um, so we were delivering more for less. Um, we were able to be cost aware uh, and build small, keep things small and scale quickly uh, with the uh, innovation platform uh, approaches to things like uh, um, the terraforming automation scripts, uh, our building blocks uh, were designed ready to, to make things scale easily. Um, and of course, address uh, uh, resourcing models and things like security and data sovereignty. And of course, trying to ensure um, a good quality out of the box from day one. Dan? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Yeah, just in brief, uh, the perspective on, on the Flexcon partner program. So, you know, we so much uh, appreciate the partnership uh, of Cap Gemini. Phil's done a fantastic job leading that through and helping customers and such. And, and in general, this, you know, this is what we do. And, and, and with support of, of Jurgen and providing this type of visibility, you know, a little opportunity to say that ultimately, you know, we, we love working with partners to, to leverage Flex Deploy really as that, as that differentiating enterprise solution, you know, DevOps platform that has so many out of the box capabilities and support of, of Oracle technology. Hopefully you gain an appreciation for that. And the one slide which, which uh, described the, the different services, products, um, both traditional, if you will, and, and cloud that's just out of the box. And so it's a very uh, robust and cost-effective solution. Um, we work uh, uh, similar to what we do with Capgemini to, to look at opportunities where we can support um, our partners, uh, both in the, in, call it the pre-sales and then ongoing, right? Making sure that you have what you need to be successful uh, throughout the entire life cycle of, of the partnership and your work with with the uh, you know your end customers, Phil. Thank you. So, the takeaways. Hopefully, you'll have heard and taken away and absorbed some of the uh, value benefits of uh, Cap Gemini's AIP techniques, uh, and hopefully, the partners won't be stealing them. Um, uh, but yeah, we're aiming for faster, smarter, right first time. Uh, power to innovate quickly and do that in incremental steps or big bang. Um, although we see a lot more success and less uh, uh, challenges in terms of organizational difficulties on, on the smaller iterations, uh, building everything on world proven foundations. Um, and if you want to see about Capgemini's information, there's a link. And of course, uh, for, for Dan and FX Deploy, um, Dan has just mentioned that his partner details and you can see in, uh, that uh, their goal is to try and uh, ease DevOps, particularly around Oracle technology stack. Um, uh, as far as our interest is concerned at Capgemini at least. Um, and then case study um, and a uh, demo there is also a, a co-authored uh, white paper as well around DevOps that uh, that Camp Gemini worked on with, with uh, Flex again. Uh, and here are your contacts. So myself, uh, uh, one of my colleagues, Andy Bell, who's the product manager for, for AIP and Dan and Rebecca at uh, Flex again. 
and I'll hand you back to Jürgen. Thank you very much, Phil. That was an impressive case study and an impressive success. Uh, also, thanks to Dan for the nice introduction and demo of Flex Deploy. It's an impressive tool. If you have questions, you can still post them in the Q&A tool and we will try to answer some of them. If you're not yet a member in the partner communities, please make sure that you register. There is more information about Capgemini and the Agile Innovation Platform and Flex Deploy for Oracle integration. So as you have seen, it's a great tool to deploy rapidly Oracle integration. And all information is published on the community websites, including the upcoming hands-on trainings and the partner forum. So let's go into the Q&A. So then there are many questions and thanks for answering some of them already around Flex Deploy. The first one is, does Flex Deploy support multi-region deployment? Yeah, the, I mean, multi-region, we have lots of customers that have a distributed footprint of cloud services. If that's multi-region, um, it could be cloud services on-prem, in many cases, multi-cloud on-prem and cloud. So it depends on what, what region is, but we've got lots of customers that have distri very distributed um, technology footprints. Thank you. And the next question is, can Flex deploy fetch OIC integrations from one environment and deploy it to another one? The short answer is yes. That's a good one. So one question for Phil. Phil, uh, thanks for the impressive case study. And you mentioned Oracle Digital Assistance. What is it used for in the context of London Heathrow Airport? My understanding, I, I'm, I'm not too close to that aspect of it. My understanding is that uh, the digital assistant was uh, deployed with the HCM uh, extensions. Uh, so when you go to the SaaS products, a lot of Oracle SaaS, they're providing extension packs that will support uh, the uh, digital assistant, giving you common access to uh, you know, personal details in the case of HCM and things like that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next question comes from Sayid uh, regarding Flex Deploy. Can you also support rollbacks and undeployment? Yeah, the, the whole notion of a, an artifact and saving versions of an artifact um, is the base enabler for ultimately rolling back a, a change, whether you know deploying a prior version of, of either just one, one uh, build artifact or project or uh, you know, an entire release. So it, there's, there's multiple ways to be able to manage that at a fine grain as well as the broader, uh, from a broader release standpoint. And do you support different types of environments like dev test and production? Yes. Basically you have the configuration. I know there was another question in there. So the, I didn't go into the details. It's really a one-time configuration. So Flex Deploy can understand all of the different environments, the properties or configurations that are specific to each environment. You know, credentials is a good example um, and managing all of those things, both on-prem and in the cloud. So we have these called accounts, cloud accounts that manage the different properties of various cloud services like integration cloud. But the short answer is, is yes, that's, that's, that's what's done and how Heathrow, as an example, um, used it extensively. Great. Phil, what's the name of your book and where can the partners and customers get it? Okay, so uh, there's several. The uh, integration one is called Implementing Oracle Integration Cloud Service. So it uh, uses the old name before OIC became OIC, uh, but the uh, um, book's still very relevant. There is a website um, that people might find very useful. It's got links to buying the book as well called oracle-integration.cloud. Um, if you go there, you'll find the links to the book. Uh, the other ones are about AIP, uh, sorry, API. <laughs> Get my acronyms mixed up here now. Uh, and that was the, uh, that's the Oracle Cloud Service product for uh, API gateways and API management. 
and there's a new one coming out that's more related to uh, OCI um, uh, and uh, CNCF. So thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Thanks for attending. If you would like to know more about Phil Wilkins, uh, Google him and visit his blog. Phil, I'm sure you can post the link to your blog in the chat. There you can also find the books, excellent book about Oracle integration if you want to get started. Then thanks a lot for the demo and there is more information on the Flexagon website, how to use it for Oracle integration or feel free to reach out to your partner manager or myself. So thanks for attending today's webcast and join us for the next community webcast on February 22nd. Thank you very much for attending.